Marvel Cars, the copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 146 regarding a missing person. Be on the lookout for Dale Slater, an American, age 20, has brown hair, light eyes. Occupation, carpenter's helper. This man has not been heard from since June 18th. That's all. Rose and Cliff. As police trail the killer on tonight's true crime story, clues lead them through California, Arizona, and Nevada. In these states, Rio Grande cracked gasoline speeds officers in their search, for throughout this area, more police, sheriffs, and emergency cars use this gasoline exclusively than any other brand. Manhunting is a serious business, and the high-powered cars operated by law enforcement officers must operate at peak efficiency. Rio Grande cracked gasoline has proved for years past that it develops more speed, more power, a greater all-around performance, and that's why so many cities and counties select this one brand year after year for their finest, fastest cars. Experience with all brands of gasoline has taught these big buyers that Rio Grande has advantages over all others. The patented cracking process by which Rio Grande Cracked is made is so different from other gasolines that it can be imitated but not duplicated. Today, as for years past, Rio Grande Cracked wins all tests to discover a faster starting, a speedier, and a more powerful gasoline. When you get gasoline tomorrow, get more for your money. Get police car performance from the Rio Grande Cracked gasoline dealer in your neighborhood. Now it is our pleasure to present Captain W.C. Allen of the Los Angeles Missing Persons Detail. Captain Allen. Good evening, friends. The case about which you will hear tonight is an amazing example of the investigation work of an untrained private individual and indicates what really fine work can be accomplished by a citizen when he or she is sufficiently aroused to action. In this case, it was a mother's love that prompted the discovery of clues leading to the apprehension of the murderer. And if every citizen felt a love for his fellow man, a love so great that he would seek to aid the police in solving crimes, not only would the crime rate diminish, but the result of the practical application of such an emotion would be the disappearance of crime altogether. On a little farm in the great central valley of Oregon a few years ago, a fond mother is busily preparing her son for a journey. There, now, there's socks, mm -hmm. shirts, yeah. toothbrush. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's about everything. <laughs> yeah. Gee, mother, it, it sure is nice of you to get me those things brand new. Well, you'll want good, durable clothes when you get to Los oh, Angeles. It's getting away. I've got to get started. Now, wait a minute. I almost forgot. Now, these have to go in the bag. Blankets? Oh, Mother, what the devil do I need with blankets in Los Angeles? Well, you never can tell what the weather will be, Dale, and I don't want you to catch Mother, cold. down in Los Angeles. Oh, don't you believe all you read about the warm sun, the palm trees. I hear the nights down there can be downright chilly. <laughs> there. Right. Uh, there. <laughs> there. Now you're all packed. All right. I've got to get going. Well, goodbye, son. Goodbye, Mother. I'll, I'll send for you. Just as soon as I can get a job. And don't you forget to write to me every day, will you? Don't worry, darling. I won't. Goodbye. Goodbye, son. So Dale Slater, carpenter's helper, sets out for a new life in the Southland. True to his promise, he writes his mother every day. But the opportunities in Los Angeles at that time were not all the young man had expected. On June 15th, 1931, he writes his mother... Employment is scarce here. I'm going to Boulder City on June 16th. A man who knows several of the foremen over there is going along with me. He says he can get jobs for both of us. After that, silence. Day follows letterless day. Frantic with fear, Mrs. Slater asks Cecil Dell, her son-in-law, who lives in Los Angeles, to try to find Dale. Inquiries to the Boulder City and Las Vegas police are fruitless. 
No one has seen or heard of young Slater. At last, Mrs. Slater writes the Motor Vehicle Bureau in Sacramento for information regarding her son's car. Back comes the answer. In reply to your request for information regarding a 1929 Ford Coupe, Oregon license number 725649, we beg to inform you that the registration of this automobile was transferred to one Gilbert F. Colley of Los Angeles on June 27th. The records are incomplete, and at this time we are unable to give you Mr. Colley's address. Hoping this serves your purpose, we beg... Convinced that her son has met with harm, Mrs. Slater travels to Los Angeles determined to find the mysterious Mr. Colley. Her son-in-law has little encouragement for her. I've tracked down every angle I can think of, Mother, and I I just can't get a line on this Colley man. Well, Dale told me he was going to Boulder City with some man. I'm sure that man was Colley. Well, the Boulder City and Las Vegas police haven't seen either of them. I wrote you that. Yes, I know. Well, how about the Los Angeles police? I've been to see Captain Allen of the missing person detail. He's keeping a lookout for Dale. But he told me not to worry. Most missing persons are just people who get tired of riding home. Oh, but Dale always rode every day. Still, I wouldn't be too worried, Mother. After all, he's young and he's never been away from home before. Maybe he's tied up with some girl who's taking up all his time. Oh, Dale isn't that kind of a boy. You'd be surprised how many boys are, Mother. Oh, well, I know my son better than you do, and I'm sure something's happened to him or he would have written to me. Now, I want you to go to Las Vegas and Boulder City and inquire for him yourself. But Mother, I haven't any money. Well, I have. I drew every penny of my savings out of the bank before I left. Very well. If you want to pay the freight, I'll go. But Dell's trip to Nevada is fruitless. No one has seen or heard of Slater or Collie. However, on the way back, Dell does run into a clue at the border checking station at Yuma. Yes, I remember that car with the Oregon license. I had some trouble about it. What kind of trouble? Oh, there was a question about the identity of the driver. Uh, wait a minute till I look at the book. Oh, yeah, here it is. 1929 Ford Coupe, Oregon license number 725-649. Owned by Dale Slater. That's it. Well, it crossed the line June 19th. The day after Dale and this fellow Collie left for the dam. What did the driver look like? Well, as I remember it, he was, oh, uh, Heavy middle-aged fellow, about 50, had heavy cheeks. Kind of a tough guy. Was there a younger man in the car? No, he, he was all alone. So that's all I could find out, Mother. It isn't much of a lead. Dale left here with someone on the 18th of June. On the 19th of June, somebody drove his car out of the state. And on the 27th of June, a man named Collie registered the car in his own name. Oh, I know something's happened to him. Well, I don't know how you're going to find out. Well, couldn't we get some more help from the Motor Vehicles Bureau in Sacramento? I don't know. Maybe they might be able to give you a line on this Collie's address. Well, I won't be satisfied until I'm sure that Dale sold that car. It just wouldn't be like him to do that without telling me. Well, they could send you a photostatic copy of the transfer card. If you'll pay for it, I got one. Well, I'll pay for it. I'll pay for anything for word for my boy. Within a few days, the reply comes from Sacramento. Well, they they found an address for this Mr. Colley. Where? Well, they think he can be located in Las Vegas. Well, they're crazy. I tell you, nobody up there ever heard of him. Did you send a copy of the transfer card? Yes, here it is. Why, look. What? This isn't Dale's handwriting, this signature. No, by golly, you're right. Oh, what do you suppose has happened to him? Now, Mother, get a hold of yourself. This is no time to break up. We've got to figure out what to do next. Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a letter to this Mr. Collie in Las Vegas. But, Mother, that's useless. Well... Contrary to her son-in-law's hopeless attitude, Mrs. Slater's letter does bring a reply from Collie. A reply which sends her with something concrete into the office of Captain Allen of the Missing Persons Bureau. And then today I got this letter from the man. He says here that Dale went broke in Boulder City and sold him the car. He says Dale couldn't get a job because he drank too much. Oh, that isn't true, Captain. My son never drank. This man's lying. Now, now, Mrs. Slater, take it easy. Well, I can't help it. I haven't drawn a peaceful breath for a month. I just know something awful's happened to him. You've got to find this man... Nick and tell. Have you any idea where we can find him? Well, I sent the letter to Las Vegas, but the reply was mailed in Los Angeles, and it had a Los Angeles return address on it. Here it is on the envelope. I see. Well, Mrs. Slater, we'll send a couple of men around there to see if we can locate Mr. Collins. Yes, and I'm going with them. I want to talk to that man. He's done anything to my father. 
Captain Allen assigns Detective Lieutenants Eddie Romero and W.J. Clark to accompany Mrs. Slater. Arriving at the address on East 3rd Street, a cheap rooming house, they are informed by the landlady that Mr. Collie no longer lives there. However, they insist upon examining his room. Didn't leave much behind him. Some stuff here in the closet, Eddie. What is it? Oh, some shirts stuffed up here on the shelf. Let me see them. Ah, here you are, ma'am. Recognize them, ma'am? Why, well, I think that... Say, uh, that say, would... here's a suitcase back here. A suitcase? Yeah, yeah, look. That is, that Dale suitcase. I packed it for him. Open it up. Hurry, open it up. And then the socks I got him and the blankets. Oh, this is terrible. terrible. Now, wait a minute, ma'am. Nothing's terrible yet. Oh, I'm sure something's happened to Dale. Oh, I'll never be sure about anything, oh, ma'am. Man. I'll bet any dough he's okay. Oh, no, something awful has happened to him. we got to find this guy, Collie, oh, first. All we know is he's got your son's car and his clothes, but that doesn't prove oh, your son's oh, in any no. trouble. I'm positive. I'm positive. While Detective Clark seeks to calm the hysterical Mrs. Slater, Romero interviews the landlady. You have any idea where Mr. Collie's gone? No, I haven't. It's very important that we get in touch with him. What do you want him for? We think he can give us some information. Did you ever hear him mention a young fellow by the name of Slater? No, I haven't. Well, this boy's missing, and we're trying to locate him. He was last seen with Collie. Oh, then you aren't trying to pin anything on him. Oh, I should say not. We just want to talk to him. Ease that poor woman's mind about her son. Now, tell me where he is, huh? I I really don't know. He doesn't always stay here when he comes to town. But uh, he does phone me whenever he's here. He does? Yes. You see, uh, we're good friends. Will you let us know when he comes in town again? Why, certainly. I'm sure he'll be glad to help you, if he can. Thanks. Uh, Here's my card. You just call me at Michigan 5211 the first thing you hear from, huh? But the two officers do not sit idly by, waiting for Collie to return to Los Angeles. Equipped with a photograph of the missing boy, they set out on the highway between Los Angeles and Las Vegas to interview every gasoline station and hamburger stand attendant in an effort to discover a trace of him. It is a grueling, hopeless work. But finally, at a station in the desert between Victorville and Barstow... Oh, sure. Sure, I remember that lad. I stopped by here to fix some wire in his car. What kind of a car was it? It seems like... There's a Ford Coupe. Was he alone? Uh, no, no, no. There's another guy with him. No, no, it's how he was. He never opened his trap. Never got out of the car. Let the kid do the work. And what does this other man look like? Well, it's about 50, I guess. Uh, heavy set fellow. Well, thanks a lot, partner. Come on, Clark. Uh, sure thing. Drop in again when you need more gas. Hey, what's the idea of heading back? We're going to San Bernardino. Why? Well, look. Slater and this heavy set guy were together at that service station. And when the car got to Yuma... The heavy fellow was alone. Something happened to Slater between that gas station and Yuma. Yeah, that checks all right, but why go back? Why not go on and search the country between here and Yuma? Because that whole stretch of highway lies in San Bernardino County. I want the cooperation of Sheriff Shea down in San Bernardino before we get started on that job. Sheriff Emmett Shea of San Bernardino County gives the Los Angeles officers full cooperation. From the sheriff's office goes a statewide bulletin carrying Slater's picture and asking for information regarding his whereabouts and for the arrest of Gilbert Colley in connection with the disappearance. Within a couple of days, the replies begin coming in. Orange County reports... Gilbert Colley wanted in Orange County for jumping bond and a theft charge. From Northern California comes the information that Colley has previously been arrested for theft there. And from the State Bureau of Identification at Sacramento comes the greatest assistance. In reply to your bulletin, Gilbert Francis Colley has a long criminal record. He is known under seven aliases and is a very tough subject. Fingerprints and photographs are unclosed. And while Clark and Romero are still jubilant over the information they now have on their man... Detective Bureau, Clark speaking. May I speak with Lieutenant Romero, please? Yeah, just a moment. See you, Eddie. Okay, thanks. Romero speaking. Lieutenant Romero, this is Mrs. Stein. Mrs. Stein? Yeah, that's the landlady over at Collie's place. Oh, yes, yes, Mrs. Stein. Uh, oh, what is it? He's back. Who, Collie? Yes, he phoned me this morning. He isn't staying at your place? No, he's down at a Japanese rooming house on North Main Street, 729. Well, thanks a lot, Mrs. Stein. We'll go down there and have a little talk with him. Oh, so very sorry, uh, Mr. Cully, not to live here anymore. When did he leave? Oh, he leaving this morning. Where'd he go? 
Oh, he not, uh, she say he go with Mr. Walker to Imperial Valley for looking for Walker. Yes. Uh, who's Walker? Oh, he ping uh, other rumor. I'm not knowing how I living with the rumors are moving all the time and uh, owing me money what is uh, furthermore... Oh. Hold your money, Walker. Oh, no, no, no. Not the Walker, but uh, Mr. Kelly. He owing money. Oh. He's saying uh, he pay back, but I don't know. Maybe so. Okay. You know who we are? Oh, I'm thinking you're a policeman. Well, that's right. We want to talk to Kelly. Now, you let us know when he comes back. See? Oh, yes, sir. I sing very well, thank you. And uh, don't tell him that we were here. Get it? Oh, I'm getting it. Uh, not the telling, but uh, seeing. Yes, sir. But in spite of the Japanese proprietor's valuable promises, Romero and Clark place a stakeout in the rooming house. For three days, officers watch the spot day and night. And finally, at midnight of November 20th, Collie returns to the place. A few moments later, Romero and Clark interview the landlord. Yes, uh, Mr. Collie, he's coming back. And, oh, Joey, he's paying me $5 he owe. He having a much of money this time. Nice to roll, didn't he? Oh, yes, sir. But uh, too bad. Uh, Mr. Walker, he not uh, coming back. He gone for keeps, Mr. Collie, sir. Let's, uh, let's have the key to his room. Oh, Rooms in my place are not having keys. Uh, more better no monkey business is in the rooms if door cannot be locked. So much the better. What room's he in? Uh, number 112. Uh, that is uh, three doors down hall to right... Uh... Come on, Clark. Yeah. Well, here we are. Boy, is he sawing wood. We'll just ease in on him. You all set? Let's go. Flash your light around. Ought to be a switch by the door. Yeah, yeah, here it is. <laughs> the light didn't even wake him. Okay. Okay, Carly, snap out of it. Come on, come on, wake up. Oh, what the heck? Oh, who are you guys? Police officers. Where's your friend, Walker? Yeah, Walker? What do you want him for? Plenty, where is he? I uh, left him down the Imperial Valley, El Centro. How did you get back? In a bus. You're lying, Kelly. You drove a car. How do you know? We saw you drive in. We checked the car you were driving. It's Walker's car. Now, shag it to your clothes. We're taking you in. Still letting Kelly believe they're after Walker, the officers take him into Central Police Station for questioning. Look here, boys. I don't know what the big excitement is, but... I'll do everything I can for you. Well, that's right accommodating of you, Collie. You can begin by telling us the truth about Walker. I've been telling you the truth. I left him down at El Centro. And how come you drove his car back here? Can't think up a comeback for that one, eh? How about Slater? Slater? Sure, Slater, your good pal, the kid you were going to find work for in Las Vegas. Uh, I don't know what you... Now, stop this fooling around, Collie. You know Dale Slater? Well, yeah. Well, where is he? Well, I left him in Boulder City. Oh, you left him in Boulder City? And you drove his car to Yuma. Hey, you seem to be in the habit of parking your friends all over the Southwest and then driving over their cars. Want to transfer Walker's car to your name like you did Slater's? I bought that car from Slater for a hundred bucks. And uh, what did you do with it? Sold it. Yeah, for a hundred and fifty, probably. Where's Slater? In Boulder City when I saw him last. Where's Walker? In El Centro. We got a bond jump charge against you in Orange County, Cali. You might as well come clean. I'm telling the truth. Uh, take him to his cell, Clark. I'm going to ring Sheriff Jackson in Orange County and tell him we got his man. <laughs> But Romero is unable to get in touch with Sheriff Jackson, for at that moment he is investigating the charred remains of a burned barn at the town of Olinda and listening to the report of two men who fought the fire. Uh, we were coming home from work in the oil fields, uh, Barman and I, and we saw this barn burning, so we tried to put it out, but we couldn't. It was burning too old. Well, what'd you call me for? Uh, look what we found in the ashes. Throw your light down there, Barman. Now there, Sheriff. A burned human body. Well, that's what we thought, so we called you. To find any identification on him? We didn't look very carefully, but you can see one arm isn't burned, and there's a spread eagle tattoo on it. But do either of you know anybody with such a tattoo? No, sir. Well, it's probably some tramp crawled into the barn for sleep and set fire to it with a match. I'll have the coroner's ambulance pick him up. <laughs> Following morning, Sheriff Jackson telephones the Los Angeles police, apologizing for being out, and explains the circumstances of the tramp who was burned. Inspector Davidson, to whom he is speaking, is thinking past along another line. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Maybe that was a tramp, and maybe it wasn't. 
Why, what do you mean? Well, this fellow Collie that you want on bond jumping come in last night about midnight from Imperial Valley. He drove in by way of Riverside. He could have come through Orange County. Could have come through Olinda. Yes, he could have, but it would have been out of his way. Worth it if he wanted to bump somebody off. What do you mean? Collie went to the Imperial Valley with a fellow by the name of George Walker. He came back alone with Walker's car. Pulled the same thing with a boy from Oregon by the name of Dell Slater. You mean this might be murder? I do, and I'd appreciate it if you'd start investigating it as such. We have a strong suspicion against this man and no case. Maybe you could provide us with the necessary evidence to convict him. I'll certainly do everything I can, Inspector. Sheriff Jackson's revived investigation results in the discovery that the caretaker of the ranch on which the fire occurred is a brother-in-law of Collie. The sheriff questions the man closely. I tell you, I ain't seen Gil for months. But he is your brother-in-law. Sure, he's my brother-in-law. I told you that. Where were you last night? I was home in bed. You're a caretaker of this ranch. How come you didn't come down to the fire? Well, my place is over the hill from that barn. I didn't know anything about the fire until this morning. Does your brother-in-law ever come down here? Sure, sometimes. Pretty well acquainted with the ranch, is he? He knows his way around. Do you know anybody that has a blue spread eagle tattooed on his arm? No, don't. Do you know a fellow named Dale Slater? No, don't. Who's he? Friend of college. You know George Walker. No, and I ain't got all day to play do you know with you. I got a fence to mend. Equipped with the important information that Collie was well acquainted with the ranch on which the burned body was found, the officers renew their grilling of the suspect. For hours, they question him, demanding to know how he came in possession of Walker's car, assuring him that they know every detail of the fire in Olinda. Finally. All right, all right. Let up, will you? Put away the saps. I killed him. He's dead. I killed him. It was him or me. He was coming for me, and I let him have it first. I carried his body to that barn down on the ranch where my brother-in-law's caretaker. I piled straw and stuff around it and poured on gasoline, lit a match. So what? No, so self-defense is going to be your argument. It's the truth. Not robbery? What do you mean? Oh, the car, the bankroll you flashed at the hotel last night. Oh, you dicks make me sick with your suspicions. How about Slater? Where did you murder him? Uh, what? You heard the question. What part of the highway between Phelps and Davidson's gas station and Yuma... Did you kill Dale Slater? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You birds can't tie every bump off in the past ten years on me. I killed Walker in self-defense, but I ain't confessing to anything else. And I'll see you guys roast before I do. But the police are relentless. Working in relays, they continue to question the surly suspect. Midnight comes and goes. The small hours of morning are very thin and long, and day begins to open his gray eye, and still Collie is defiant. Suddenly, though... Oh, crime and you guys are gluttons for punishment. You must be almost as tired as I am. Yeah, just about. Well, let's all get some sleep, huh? As soon as you break. I ain't breaking, but I'll talk. Well, that's well. We'll start right now. Okay. I killed the Slater kid. I cracked him a couple with a tent pole while he was sleeping. Where was this? You know where... Between Victorville and Yuma. We was camping out. He thought I was taking him to Boulder Dam to find a job. <laughs> Dumb lug. What did you do with the body? I burned it, like I did walkers. Only parts of Slater didn't burn so good. So I buried him. What did you do it for? I needed a car. And the kid had one. You think you could find that spot where you killed him? Yeah. I know where it is. Okay, let's go. Uh-uh. Not me. What do you mean, uh-uh, not hey, you? Hey, listen... I don't want to see no more dead men. No, I told you all about it. I confessed everything, so just count me out of this picnic. I'll draw you a map, but I, I don't want to go near the place. I'm sick of dead bodies. The officers, following the self-confessed murderer's map, easily discover the charred remains of Dale Slater. And after further investigation of his effects, they talk to Collie once more. So you found the kid, huh? That's good. When I get around to it, I'll give you a line on some more bodies. I'll keep you digging for a long time. What do you mean? Don't you wish you knew? You're not referring to these, are you, Collie? Where'd you get them keys? Out of a suitcase of yours. The keys to 20 ignition locks on 20 automobiles. Where did you get them? 
try and find out. Who else did you bump off for his automobile, Collie? Don't you wish you knew? No amount of questioning can elicit further information from Collar regarding his murder career. But officers uncover strange tales. From the landlady on 3rd Street, they learn... Mr. Collie left for Sequoia on August 10th, 1931, with a boarder of mine by the name of J.F. Halligan. Mr. Halligan never returned. A young man reports... My father was supposed to join Collie at Boulder Dam on June 22nd. He left for the dam, but I haven't seen him since. Riverside County Authorities report. Holly lived next door to a Barney Woods in Riverside several years ago. Woods disappeared in 1923. Six years later, they dug up his skeleton in his own backyard. But nothing more was proven, nor did it have to be proven. Holly was tried for the killing of Slater and found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to hang. In condemned row, Collie went insane and was removed to the state hospital at Mendocino, where he quickly regained his sanity. Upon his return to San Quentin to be hanged, Governor Rolfe commuted his sentence to life imprisonment. Thank you, Captain Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, these true crime stories are just as interesting to read as to hear. So we invite you to call at any Rio Grande station for a free copy of the Calling All Cars News which contains these dramatic stories, illustrated descriptions of forthcoming broadcasts, and latest movie and radio news. We offer the news free, and we also offer 14 free gifts for boys and girls at service stations where Rio Grande Cracked gasoline is sold. Sooner or later, we know you'll try Rio Grande Cracked in your car, and we know that once you've experienced the thrill of police car performance in your own car, you'll never be content with any other gasoline. We also hope to win you over to Sinclair Motor Oils, which are featured by all Rio Grande stations because they are motor oils we can guarantee. We know that you can't break the lubrication seal of Sinclair Motor Oil no matter how fast you travel or how hot your engine gets. We know that other oils do break down under the strain of today's fast driving, allowing metal to scrape against metal and run up repair bills for you. Because the users of Rio Grande cracked gasoline want greater speed and power... We urge them all to protect their engines with Sinclair motor oils so they can enjoy greater speed with safety. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, a cancellation broadcast 146 regarding a missing person. The subject has been found murdered. That's all. Rose and Quiz.